there's going to be three tests that I'm going to run. One is pump running free in the air. Second one is pump uh, in open water, just pumping water. And then the third one is with me blocking off the intake for the pump. Now, again, if this gentleman is correct, we should see the amperage go down when I block it because it just, he says the impeller just freewheels inside. We'll see. It seems counterintuitive to me, but we're going to see what happens. So first off, uh, in the air, we're at uh, three quarters of an amp, 0 0.72 amps. In the water, most exactly three amps. And now I'm going to block the intake. Oh my God, he's right. Look at 0.8 amps. I would never have thought. All right. I learned something today. That's pretty incredible to me. All right, we are out uh, testing the 23 and uh, trying to get the trim right and uh, needs a little work. And so she's heavy by the nose. Um, so we're going to need considerable amount of weight in the stern here. Now, I want to keep the water level right about there, which means the boat might be sitting just a tad high, but as this is a surface craft, actually, that'll mean it'll have a lot more presence on the water and it'll keep the lid out, which is just going to mean that you'll have that much less to worry about um, from a leak perspective. So uh, I'm going to grab a bunch of weight and see where I can jam it in the stern here, potentially outside of the watertight box. All right, this is round two. I did put a whole bunch of foam, or foam, some weight in the in the back there behind the waterproof box, but it needs more. Got a whole bunch in the elastic band on the bottom there. This is where I want it to float. Um, it's gonna be right um, below the waterproof box, which means there's gonna be no water pressure whatsoever trying to force its way in past those seals. Um, and then uh, I've got it, I just think just ever so slightly down in the back. Um, and that just means it'll be less prone to sucking air with the, uh, with the propeller there underway. But um, yeah, super solid. Um, I think this is perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find room for all that weight in the back, get that secured, and then uh, we'll be moving on to some cosmetics. All right, wet tests have gone well. Not a drop inside the watertight compartment, which is awesome. Um, I've secured the forward dive planes with a little bit of adhesive. Uh, the other thing that I want to do right now, because I'm assuming this is like a 30-year-old kit and I don't know what's been done to it. This is an old-style stuffing box, like what they used to do for like RC boats. Not a good idea for RC submarines. I'm glad this is going to be a surface craft. Um, obviously, you know, in my mind, grease is a lubricant. It's not a sealant. So uh, what I'm going to do, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to squeeze some grease into this syringe. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and inject this stuffing box with grease in an effort to fill it up. So now, in theory, that'll be better than what it had going on before. Now, um, we're gonna move on to some uh, cosmetics. We gotta clean up all this nastiness all these split seams. Um, we need to prime this and see what sort of a mess we're dealing with down here. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely had some um, creative application of of filling compounds in various spots. You know, this this is never going to be a museum quality model, and it was never designed to be. Uh, but we'll get it close, and um, I think a 
creative use of weathering is going to go a long way to hiding a lot of the uh, you know mistakes that were made during the initial assembly all right we're getting ready to launch kilo in the pool Yeah, it still has a little bit of a lean whenever. Uh... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. You bent your snorkel. Hmm. Yeah, it's like super glitchy, eh? <laughs> Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Okay, well. I have been having some fun problems with Kilo previously, and for the longest time, we couldn't really figure it out. But luckily, on our recent road trip, I happened to run into Frank, and he shared some awe-inspiringly good advice, which is that even if it's an e uh, brushless ESC, you can't have your receiver on top of it. Because as you might see in uh, the video regarding this thing, it's been glitching like absolutely crazy. So we decided just like 30 seconds ago just to take them out and separate them even this far and test it. And all of a sudden it had zero problems. So we decided to do a control, move them back this close and it went back to having problems. So, lesson learned. ESCs will uh, freak the heck out of your boat if they are too close to your receiver. All right, and I have cracked into a new project. Um, this is one that I hauled back uh, in the van and uh, hoping this is gonna be a quick turnaround. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is a big boat. Um, 48th Akula. Um, I don't know if, if this is actually properly showing you the size. That is eight feet long. Um, we're going to crack into it. I'm going to uh, show you guys what it looks like inside. And I'm going to throw a receiver in there. That will be running off of the same transmitter as a Seahoon and a bunch of other boats. So um, if things go well, if, if Dwayne's got his boat set up, we may be even putting this in the pool tomorrow to double check trim. And when Ed comes out on Friday, this will be out in the pond. So let's see what that looks like. So I'll try not to get my back in this too much, but uh, just a couple of little toggles uh, here and back here. And once those are released, you can just slide the whole top off. That's it. Well done. This is what it looks like inside. Got some bulkheads in there looks like what Dwayne did is he 3d printed the grates and then smoothed them out on the inside that's pretty cool show you what this thing looks like inside um it is quite uh, what's the word cavernous <laughs> inside um we got a nine amp sealed lead acid battery, which should be lots and lots of capacity for this to run for a long time. Um, these are Dwayne's Home Depot magnetic couplers, which probably gonna work. They're pretty solid, I think that'll work. Um, this is the first time I've seen this cylinder, but uh, this is pretty standard Dwayne setup. We got a forward servo for the four die planes, a linear servo for the ballast system, and then we got our air pump for the ballast system. Now I'm interested in seeing how quickly this uh, fills the, or empties the, the ballast tank out. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Um, that's the um, intake for the air pump that gets connected to the upper hull. <laughs> Big ballast tank. Gas backup. Oh, I see. So he's actually got two vents. He's got a forward vent and uh, a stern vent. So that's cool. These these little linear servos are not cheap, by the way. They're like, I think they're like 50 or $60 a piece. 
Um, and then what else we got in here? This would be where the receiver goes. And then rudder and dive plane. Big, beefy motor running through gear reduction, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, oh, goody. An M-Tronics ESC. Do you think it's going to explode on us? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Who knows? All right. And then uh, we got our magnetic linkages in the back for, let's see, I'll disconnect this. Got our rudders. Those have got some mass to them. Got some inertia when they start swinging. And then we got our uh, rudders. Or uh, rudders, die planes. There you go. That looks good. We got a double U joint scenario going on here for the prop. Um, yeah. So it's funny, you got quick disconnects for the linkages, but then you got universal joints for the drive shaft. So you got to undo these with an Allen wrench and then slip everything forward, but it's all good. Um, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to yank this sucker out, open it up, throw a receiver in there and then, uh, get it all trimmed up and ready to go with the new transmitter. Well, that was easy. I love these radios. It just makes life so much easier than goofing around with those low frequency radios. But at any rate, so everything is installed. This is the power switch. You just literally connect it. And what's beautiful about this boat is you just drop the top down, two clips, and you're done. So really, it's not a big deal at all to, uh, to, to do this without a remote switch. I do want to make a note. Dwayne is, is smarter than he looks. Um, I did not notice that this is a square coupler. And what's in here is there's a large square tube. And then this one is a small square tube. So this is actually a slip joint right here. So uh, you just basically pull the cylinder forward and this falls apart. He's so smart. So yeah, no tools for uh, installation or removal. Um, let me show you how this uh, all works. So we've got our uh, our rudders. Now that that pitch control is super sensitive. I have it set on the least sensitive setting, but it still likes glitching the stern planes a little bit, which I don't think is a big deal. Got really good throw. I went ahead and moved these. These were on the far extremes, and I had the throw set to about 65%. So I just moved these in. So now these servos will have a lot more torque. Uh, they won't be working as hard. Um, so we've got rudder, and then I've got stern plane set up on the slider on the side. So for the most part, they're going to be autonomous, but you can override them. You can, uh, let me see if I can do this with one hand here. You can uh, surface and dive by overriding the uh, pitch controller. we got throttle, and this is nice and smooth. That gearbox makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, and then up front here, we've got our forward planes, obviously. And then uh, our ballast system. Now, I, I want to show you this. So again, there's two vents. There's one there, and there's one there. And this is how it works. So this is neutral position here right now. So if I go this way, it vents. Both this vent and this vent are open. You can see that right there, right? So if I close the vent, you can see those go down. And now it's all sealed up. If I go forward a little bit, so this is neutral, and then if I go forward a bit, the air pump kicks on. So that's sucking air from the surface and blowing it. That's the low pressure system. Now if I really want to get up, I can hit the gas like this. So that's a, a emergency gas backup. Or uh, if you're fully submerged, you can uh, you'll always be able to surface. So this is now set up. We should, in theory, tomorrow, weather permitting, be able to drop this in the pool and check trim. New day, Tuesday morning. First thing, um, uh, I went ahead and set all the fail safes for the Akula and got it off the bench. I got it <laughs> positioned in the uh, uh, entry to my house waiting for things to lighten up a little bit and then we're gonna dunk it in the pool and see if it floats and sinks and refloats again. Um, Logan's working on something outside. We're gonna show you what that looks like here in a minute. Oh, he's done already, he's coming in. Uh, but I'm working on Marlin. Man, I have had a ton of people reach out to me on this thing. Um, 
I don't know if, if they're all expecting it like a super deal on it or not, but this is this is a, a real boat. Like I'm super excited about it. I'm in the middle of uh, of the cylinder. I want to show you what that looks like. This is the cylinder, um, and this is a proportional piston tank. Now, what I've done is I this it used to have this uh, T9 CHP Futaba in it, but I took that out because I think somebody else would really benefit from this low frequency radio. Um, uh, I don't necessarily need it, and this boat doesn't necessarily need it, so I'm going to take it out. We're going to sell this separately, so uh, we'll have that listed up here eh, today, tomorrow, something like that. But what I went ahead and did is is put the 900 megahertz Horus in there, and I uh, got all the channels uh, set up here and everything. So that's the receiver. I'll tuck the antennas in there, you know, wherever they need to go. But um, like I said, it, it is fully proportional, so I can I can twist this dial here, and the piston tank will extend and retract with the control. So that's super cool. And then we've got our rudder outputs, our four uh, four die planes, and our stern die planes, all set up there. The one thing that is disappointing is this electronic speed controller, I don't know where it came from or whatever, um, is forward only. Um, so no reverse. So I'm going to swap that out for a different electronic speed controller, that should be super fast. Um, the other thing I've got to watch is this is uh, an outrunner, so all of these wires here we're rubbing on the outside. So I, I'm gonna have to really make sure that none of those are touching that outer motor casing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I think this cylinder is basically gonna be ready to go. I don't like this. This is a little kinky, not in a good way. Um, I'm gonna take the hose off. I'm gonna put a longer, wow, no. Well, no, no, that's gonna be problematic to get on there. I don't know. Maybe I'll just put a spacer on or, I don't know, we'll see. Um, it, it's open. It's just I don't like I don't like that little kink in there. The other thing I need to do is fabricate a uh, a splitter for this, so that we can run parallel battery packs. So that we'll have a 4.4 amp battery pack for this bad boy. And then once all that's done, we can go ahead and uh, worry about fitting everything inside. And then we got Logan working on something. Oh, that cleaned up pretty good. Yeah, all the dust bunnies that were latched onto it kind of just like fasten themselves around the corners. You can see I'm just plucking those off. But honestly, I'd say if I get a paper towel, soak the end of it with a bit of alcohol, it'd probably take me two or three rags, but I can basically yep. mop up most of the deck. And then if I get a Q-tip, dip that in some alcohol, I can clean up any of the more precise spots, like the windows up here across the front, uh, the glass here, the dome here. Yeah. Railings in the front make it look like a ghost ship or something. Uh, and then we're going to tear into it and we're going to see if it works. In theory, it's supposed to. That's what he said. I mean, we basically got it for nothing, so it's not like if it doesn't work, I get my money back. But we'll see. I think we're going to be okay. It's uh, got some good engines in it. Yeah, yeah. So that's Logan's project. He's going to be working on that here right away while I play with the uh, Marlin. All right, uh, it's few hours later since the last little uh, clip we did and I've made a lot of progress on Marlin and Logan's made a lot of progress on the uh, the boat there. Um, let's talk Marlin first. So as you can see the cylinder is all um, installed. Uh, everything is all done. I put a new electronic speed controller in there. I got forward and reverse. Um, I figured out the mounting system that this person had in mind. So there's this pin that goes through this bulkhead and it uh, secures in um, just kind of with friction in the end cap and that so that keeps it centralized. On the other side, um, I created a custom short dog bone. The one that was supplied was too long uh, and this is perfectly free spinning. It's really good. These linkages I discovered, there used to be uh, a thin brass rod that came out and it would have slipped into here and then you would have used a wheel collar to lock it in place. 
Um, that must have gotten sheared off on both sides here. So uh, I'm going to put some magnetic connectors on here, which will be super cool. Um, this is the linkage for the forward dive plane. So it comes out the side of the boat, runs in that sleeve. Um, I'm assuming it, it clips with a, you know, like a wheel collar there. But here's the challenge. It goes up in the front. Now this used to be secured to the hull right here. I knocked out that support and everything. This is the, the issue. Super long horn. So this is the full travel of the dive planes. Like nothing, like five degrees up and five degrees down. Um, not well thought out. Um, I think what I'm going to try for the sake of simplicity is moving that pivot point up and we'll see if this flex shaft will take it. I think it will. Um, so it'll just go up something a little closer and we'll get more travel. If this turns out to be a pain in the, in the butt, then I might just negate the forward planes altogether because um, Marlin's got the dive planes right behind the prop, which means you're going to have pretty stupendous uh, response to pitch inputs. So um, that's what we've got going on here for this. Um, one other interesting thing I uh, want to point out, these screw holes lock the cap in place because when this ballast cycles the entire cylinder pressurizes and you don't want to blow the end caps off now you went a little overboard you had like four bolts in there really you just need two i think to stop it from uh coming out the other interesting choice however is you see that bolt under there that goes up underneath and bolts into the end cap so it's really kind of a process to get this all set up. You have to take the cylinder out, connect the batteries for power, because there's no switch, put everything in place while it's on, lock it all down, bolt it all down, pin it all down, hook up the, you know, the uh, push rods and everything, um, and then you'd be ready to go. So probably a good up grade would be a remote on off switch but uh for right now the important thing is to get this thing running and see where it uh, ends up um i just wanted to also show again just a close-up of all this really really cool detail on here and in particular one thing that i really found fascinating is this so you can see that that interesting little piece of detail but if you just kind of push on it you can flip it over, and now you got the cleat. How cool is that? Pretty neat. What'd you think? I didn't actually see the cleat. Oh, this flips over in the back right here. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's a neat detail. I mean, let's talk. Uh, let's talk. This sucker here, Crockett. What do we? What do we got? So what did, at the beginning, what did what did we figure out? Because we were stupefied for a little bit. Uh, so the big problem we had right off the bat is that we had three power inputs. And we couldn't figure out why, why? there were three. Yeah. It seemed, the first time we looked at it, we figured they were rigged in series as a way to increase the voltage. Let everything be 12 volts, so you just install multiple 6 volts. But... Hooked up one part, or hooked up one of them. Checks uh, using the multimeter on the others, and no power is going to them. So after a lot of poking and prodding, we eventually just decided to screw it and started plugging them in one by one and testing the functions. Yeah. So for, first we threw 7.4 volts on one of the leads just to see what it did, and everything powered on. And then we put it on another one, and everything powered on. And then we put it on another one, and everything powered on. So they're obviously all part of the same circuit but what now we you've been digging into this this is kind of like your thing so what what all can this do what does all this stuff do uh so a bunch of fun things is that each of two different channels controls two different or er, two different functions each this servo here controls the spotlights that are located on the side of the top deck by go ahead and rotating the servo and pressing this 
It's got the horn here, which leads back to a big speaker back here. Mm -hmm. Which I, I discovered, by the way, if you take this off, it's like a mesh. And you can see the gigantic speaker underneath there, which is interesting. I wonder if he run, ran with this off. Like, I wonder why it's removable. Oh, difference of display versus running? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. And then back here is the rotation for the rear turret, which I'm in the process of renovating. Yeah, interesting design, hey? Yeah, I had to replace the outer ring here since the previous one was... Around? No, I threw it out. Uh, it was basically like smooth and glassed over at spots from where the rubber hardened and fell off and then got polished from use. Mm -hmm. So this, when we kick power onto this, this just goes in one direction, right? Yeah, just spins. So this is like, this is a little geared motor with a 90 degree output as well. So I'd be willing to bet this is a worm drive that moves this thing around, but probably only at like 100 RPM or something. And then you put it on this massive thing. So it, how long do you figure it takes to spin that turret around? I mean, full 360, maybe 20 seconds. God, I'd see like a minute or longer than that. It's super slow anyway. <laughs> same thing with the with the front. And it's the same setup. I don't know if you, you probably can't see that in here. But it's like a big wheel. And it only goes in one direction. Now, this one doesn't. What what makes the, that change direction? That is this rather interesting mechanism here, which splits two different circuits for each of the different rotations. One when the contact leads are opposed, yeah. yeah. And then for each diagonal, it uh, rotates left or right. Yeah, so that's just a servo, and it just like swivels around, and it and it goes super slow left and super slow right. I suppose if you're going for accuracy, it does take a long time to wheel those things around, but maybe not that long. Yeah. And the, the other frustrating thing, because I've got some servos that we could just hook up onto this and it, and it al would allow full spinning because they don't have the stops in them. So we could, we, right, we'll probably do that for this one, hey? Yeah, for that one. Yeah. What's the issue up front? This one, the closest we can get would technically be here, but we would have to break this board off. There are a few flathead screws here, but it's still glued down and mm -hmm. plywood as well so it's Hard not something we can just like bust off <laughs> yeah so we basically what he's saying is we have no access to that which is sucky it moves now it works just really really slow what else is what else is in here we got the old receiver which we discovered we don't have a radio for so we've got a radio link in there yep. nice radio link receiver in there as well and then how does this, this work? T talk about this a little bit. Oh, that. Uh, that actually has a couple of cool features. Uh, this is the smokestack, which I didn't even realize he even labeled how many drops you should put into it for a full amount. But it's powered by the opposite side of this switch. And as a really cool note, to make sure you don't stick your finger into the uh, heating device, when it receives power, this green LED turns on. So yeah. you can always tell when it has power. You can also hear it. There's like a little fan in there. Yeah, it's also a couple years old. So maybe when it was new, it wasn't that mm -hmm. loud. And then there's like a little funnel that the smoke goes up into. And I guess it comes out the top there somehow. Although, is that a lid? Does that come off? Oh, it does. It's a bottle cap, actually. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. It's just, I don't know, maybe for storage? I don't know, I don't know why you'd cop that off. Anyhow, but yeah, it's got smoke too. Unless um, there's water in it, it would kind of suck. Yeah. You're going to have a, a funnel that drops water directly on your receiver. Yeah, and then we got these contacts too that power everything on the, on the top here. So there's no wires that go through. We still, we still haven't got that all, all figured out, but only because we just found these switches. I think. So... We're going LiPo with this because they fit really well. So it'll be 11.1 .1 volts instead of 12 volts, which isn't a big deal. We tested it and it's working. And because we had two leads, we're going to power each one of them individually. 
and so they'll it'll, um, velcro together so you can choose if you want to have only one or two or all know, right whichever. yeah and then this i guess is just maybe there was a third battery if you mm. want to be able to run this thing for four days straight, you can attach a third battery. But there's not a lot of room for battery in there. I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't fit know. Another lipo. <laughs> yeah. And then I think we think these are the grease zerts for the stuffing boxes here and here. It's a little rattly in one direction, but really smooth in the other direction. So we got to pull this out. And then this is the new receiver, 2.4 gig receiver. But it's coming along good. Um, the rudder fell off. Logan's working on that right now. Yeah, you can on see one my side. makeshift way of keeping it in place while I drill a hole so I can mm -hmm. fit an in there. But it, all in all, it's a pretty cool boat. So here it is. We figured we figured the lights out. And here, I want, I want to show you this turret. This is how fast it turns. But the lights are cool. They're like flashing. They've got red flashing in the back. And then this... Uh, spotlight thing left and right turns on and off with the remote this is pretty cool we, we put a little oil on the props so still the prettiest noise but well, that reverse is still clean yeah well we'll put some grease in the stuffing box i think that'll probably help smooth it out a little bit i'm trying to hold this thing off uh yeah which one was that put it on and see what it sounds like Oh, is it? <laughs> cool. I'm liking this boat more and more. All right, guys, we are at the top secret test facility, about to drop a Kula in the water for the very first time. Uh, on the bench, everything looked really good. We're going to see where it floats, uh, if it sinks, and most importantly, if it comes back up again. Let's... Uh, Get a little workout in. Yeah, I wonder if that's where it floats. All right, function test. We got rudders. We got dive planes. We got propeller. We got forward dive planes. So, is it still sinking? No, I don't think so. I think that's about where it goes, hey? I mean, it matches up with the white tape on the front. Alright, well, we'll, uh, we'll dive. Still going down. That was a mistake. We worked on our calves this morning. Now I'm stretching my calves out. That is perfect. Look at that. All right. Let's see if she comes back up again. If not, you're in for a hell of a workout. That seems like a pretty definitive yes. Yeah. So that's just the air pump. That's not the, uh, the gas. Yeah, that, that has a really, really, really high surface water line. How much you figure? 150 maybe? You gotta have a pretty good bicep curl to get that out. Wednesday morning. Uh, been busy. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, 
we decided to plow through with our respective projects. Uh, we got our, our boat over there with Logan's project and Marlin. Let's, uh, let's quickly talk about the, uh, the boat. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this thing. Um, there wasn't too much to do with the boat, luckily. When we tested all the internals, all the internals worked. So most of what we did this morning was just a matter of getting the new receiver in, getting the old receiver out, and basically fixing up this gun was the big priority today. We've replaced the old motor, which I believe... I got over by the front door there, yeah. Yeah, it's off in the corner. And we replaced it with a two-directional geared motor, so we can actually get it to rotate all the way either direction, as opposed to its previous locks kind of... One, one direction, super slow. If it works at all. Yeah. But why don't you fire it up for everyone? Show them how it works. I'm excited about that whole lifty-offy, the toppy thing with no wires. That's pretty cool. So, there we go. And it goes in both directions, which is pretty cool. All right, we are going to try this again. We popped a fuse. Um, he just had, where is it? A little glass fuse. Did we throw it out? On the. Oh, mountain. yeah. He's like little tiny. This is probably like a four amp fuse or something like that. Um, popped when we tried to do the horn and the everything smoke <laughs> together. So we just jumpered it now to get everything going back together now. Lights. That's a lot of lights. That's really cool. This thing would look pretty sweet at night. All right, fire up the smoke. Now does the horn work? Nice. And there's our spoke. Yeah, love it. Okay, so I'm excited about the um, Crockett. Uh, it was uh, perfectly trimmed out, uh, worked really, really good. All the lights worked, all the smoke worked. Um, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so Logan's going to get this cleaned up tomorrow. He's not feeling well right now. He's going to go uh, chill out and relax for a little bit. Um, but once we get this cleaned up, I think we'll bring it to Fitz's float uh, here in a little bit and uh, see if anybody wants to buy it. Yeah. But uh, in the meantime, if anybody wants to jump ahead and, uh, and grab it, I'm for sale. You can uh, reach out and uh, see if we can come to a deal. But in the meantime, I want to show you how Marlin turned out because I'm pretty excited about that one too. So this is the installed cylinder. I just went ahead and put a remote switch in here, and I did that because this is a royal pain in the patella to uh, get access to to turn the boat on and off. So this way you'll be able to test it um, in your workshop, get everything all set up, go to the pond, and uh, basically it will be ready to go at that time. So I'm going to fire up the radio. It's, it's going to yell at me because I haven't set the fail safes up yet. Uh, and we got the remote switch. It does a little cycle thing. So we got uh, rudders, perfect throw. We got our dive planes. We got perfect throw. We've got throttle. So that is all working. 
Um, I have not installed the forward planes. I don't think I'm going to. I think this is going to work out perfectly fine without needing to. Um, and then we got to ballast. Now, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yes, it was done on. Or was it? What did I put it on? I can't remember which. Oh, I did it on this one. On this lead right here. So it's all proportional. Um, so all we need to do now, I'm going to bring this out and uh, throw it in the water and make sure it doesn't leak. So we got the uh, Marlin cylinder in the pool and um, it held up really well. Everything worked. Um, one small issue was uh, right here. There's like a port and I don't know if this was supposed to be like a check port or what this was, but it was leaking pretty badly out here. And uh, all I did is uh, cap it. So I just uh, I just put a. It was already threaded for uh, an M4 bolt. I just I just threaded it in. I had a little sealant on there, so we're gonna let that kick off. But when I pressured everything up, there was no leaks other than that one little spot there. So this is looking really promising. Um, the other thing that I did just recently, I, sh I shortened this little custom dog bone. Focus. And uh, because it was kind of binding, brushless motors are really have no torque whatsoever when they're just off the start. And it was, it was kind of doing weird things in here. So I think what was happening is this was putting too much pressure here and it was causing um, binding. So that was not good. I just went ahead and shortened that up and that'll get rid of that. And hopefully everything uh, works. So we're just going to let that dry. I'm going to fix the hole in the back of the uh, crocket there, and then uh, probably going to be moving on to some cosmetics for the 23, and then I got to go to storage and do all sorts of boring shipping stuff. I got to I got to box up that big S class that I had for sale that got sold, and I sold that 50th scale Alpha. Um, so I gotta get that boxed up too. So it's probably going to take me through lunchtime at least. Oh, off we go. Well, we're on our way back from storage. Got a giant alpha in the back. It's 150th scale by a company called Ocean, Ocean Research. I don't know if they're still doing those hulls or not, but, uh, beautiful. They're about a thousand bucks back in the day. Uh, when you can get them. Um, but this one is uh, sold and I got a shear line, brand new shear line cylinder that's gonna go with it. So we're gonna pack that up, get that shipped out. We got the S class that we need to pack up and ship out. My buddy Greg just built a shipping box for me, big uh, sturdy shipping box because that one's going to the UK. So we'll be back. To the house in a minute. Fortunately, my storage place is only about 10 minutes from the house. Makes it nice and convenient and uh, we'll probably wrap up the day packing up boats. So if any of you are wondering, this is what the inside of a 150th Alpha looks like. Um, he's got all these stiffening bulkheads and everything in place, which is pretty cool. It keeps uh, everything locked in. He's got all these orientation pins which obviously mates up to the upper hull. Um, he was using the wrong kind of stainless though. That's uh, a little rusty. I forgot what that ended up looking like. Uh, he's got a drive shaft in there and stuff, but all of these are gonna get replaced because I've got updated, upgraded parts. Uh, I think that Merriman did in this scale. All right, happy Thursday, everyone. Um, it's about nine o'clock and we've been busy. Logan unpacked a whole whack of new stock that we got, which we still kind of need to go through. Some of it's still packed up, but uh, we got some uh, 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 stuff. Got a type Japanese nine, aircraft carrier. And what was that? Oh, the uh, Kaiten. Uh, I-53 
And I know, I know, before you put it in the comment, it's not an accurate kit. That's fine. But it is a very, very nice size. And if you're not a stickler for detail, it actually builds into a really beautiful model. So just bear that in mind. And I got a seven and a nine kit. I got a couple cylinders for that. I think one package is already sold. I got to get with Stan and see if he's going to take that. Um, we are working on the 23, the Surface Runner. So uh, threw some paint on that yesterday and this morning we did a little uh, weathering. So we got some rustage going on there. This is just quick and dirty. I'm not putting a ton of time into this just because the kit is so beat up and, you know, nasty. <laughs> but um, is looking pretty good. Lipstick on the pig. I, I, I think, you know, this, this would be a nice five foot boat. You know, five, from five feet away, it's going to look pretty darn slick. So Logan's throwing some paint on the prop in the back there. And then uh, he's going to work on painting the wooden deck here. We'll weather all that up and everything. And then I think we'll paint the recesses for the navigation lights in there as well. And uh, Marlin's about as done as it's going to get. Um, got a base coat of paint on there. Um, I'm going to get it listed up today. See if anybody wants to jump on it. I know a few people were inquiring, but again, I got a hunch they were thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to get like a super smoking deal on it. Nobody wants the Marlin. This is a nice one. It's not going to go for cheap. Sorry to say. And the last thing that we did was uh, paint up, or no, paint up, cleaned up, uh, crock it. It was so nasty and dusty. So we actually literally hosed it off uh very very carefully we put blankets all over the important parts but now it looks like a boat nice and clean everywhere she's drying up right now and it looks like we also got i forgot this was coming um the new version 3.0 of our battle boats so uh, did some more revisions to that. And like I told you guys, um, I think this is going to end up being a, a product that you'll be able to get from the uh, dry docks here. Um, you know, with every new version, it gets better and better. Let's take a look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Lots of good stuff going on in here. Now we get to build another battle boat. Man, this Akula is a big boat. So big. Um, so everything went perfectly the other day. The only thing I don't like are these. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Dwayne got these at Home Depot. And these are just like magnetic little tabbies for putting stuff on your refrigerator. Um, and they, they probably work okay in smaller boats, but there is a lot of mass behind these and uh, a lot of force with these servos. And I found in the pool, these are coming disconnected. So a couple options, we could, we could break all of these off and everything and put new click ons on there. Or what I think we're going to do is just fabricate a clip that's going to go down, lock in place. And then these can't come apart. Um, I'm going to see what I can come up with, uh, bend up some brass and, uh, we'll make some little retaining clips and that should fix the problem. Okay. This is what, uh, came up with for the clippages for the, uh, Russian Kula. They're just little simple U-shaped clips, uh, from three thirty seconds of brass and they just drop in. And with the design, you can bend them in and out so that they are, I guess, like perfectly adjusted to hold these in. So this now can't come loose at all. And then to get it off, you just grab it and pull it off. And gravity um, holds them down. And obviously, they don't float, so they'll continue to sink once the boat's in the water. So we got uh, one, two, and three. They got better and better as I went. This one, this one's nice and square, but kiss principle, nice and easy. I was telling Logan, I'm going to 3d print a little clip and it'll go in and everything. And you know, this is just 
this works and it's nice and simple and uh, really adjustable and duplicable. So I'm excited. This is all done now. Uh, ready for the testing. Hopefully the weather's okay. It's looking awfully gray and nasty out. The forecast is for thunder showers tomorrow. So I don't know if we're going to make it out to the pond with Ed, but uh, we'll try. This is all ready to go. Tomorrow we'll be prepping sea view. Hopefully that'll be ready to go as well and um, get some boats tested. Boxed up the S class. Um, this is why we did it. The model is, is tight against the bottom with layers of bubble wrap for cushioning between the stand and it. Then we use a lot of these expanding foam packs. Now you'll notice there's a lot of open areas and this is all done intentionally because these detail pieces don't take well to being pressed against anything. And that includes popcorn. So this is more done to hold the hull down and then this is just open air so that these little detail pieces don't get busted off. Um, foam packs are in between the box and the hull. It can't move this way. It can't move this way because we've got in the front there and then on the top as well. So basically it's locked in place and then we use glue to fuse the, the foam packs to the box. And so it's almost like a custom cushion case. And uh, the reason we're, we're going to all this trouble, not that we do, do, would do any less, for a domestic customer, but this is going to the UK. So it is going to experience um, some epic travel. Uh, so we want to make sure it gets there okay. Friday morning and uh, I'm excited. Sub Ed Tortle is on his way. He should be here in like 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna have an awesome time today. We're gonna share it with you. Uh, in the meantime, Logan and I, well, mostly Logan, collapsed a whole bunch of boxes, got them out of the way. We unpacked some new stuff that we got and uh, Logan's finishing up our uh, 30 second parallel tape 23. Looking pretty good, like I said. This is a solid six footer. I'm, I'm about three feet away when I'm filming this. It looks pretty darn awesome. I think it's gonna look great on the water, but that's not gonna happen today because they're forecasting uh, big thunder boomers and I can hear them outside already. So the odds of testing Akula and Seaview are looking rather slim and kilo. right now. And the Kilo. And Kilo. Um, let me show you what we've got going on here. These are figure sets for our 48 Nautilus. We started getting parts. Uh, these are the figures looking absolutely awesome. We're getting them all bundled up and ready to pack when the rest of the hull arrives. And in here, We've got uh, the first of the salon kits. So I want to share what that looks like. I'm excited to see what th that looks like. When it gets here, we're going to unpack that stuff that I got from Don in the corner, all those. We'll see what I got for cylinders and all that stuff. Um, and I also, before you take off today, we're going to do a little uh, reacts video based on a string of comments that I had from my last video. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may have not. You're not gonna find it now because I deleted it. We're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna, I wanna get Ed's feedback and Logan's feedback to see if I was right in what I did or if I was being uh, a huckster. There's trouble. Dude. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> How was the trip? There were a couple of points you couldn't see the lanes. From the rain? From the rain. It must be on its way. We heard thunder here a few minutes ago. Well, I it was a beautiful light storm at times. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it definitely was a light work show. But, uh, yeah, there was a couple of where everybody slows down and turns their flashes on. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. These are, I'm going to fill this in, but these are the nozzles, 3D printed. I have all the 3D printed files for you. This is approximately 1 15th scale. That's 1 32nd, so it was easy enough to blow up. So, this 
is all going to shrink down quite a bit. Okay. The whole radio system will fit in one of these. Yep, yep, yep. And a 3S8000 battery. Mm -hmm. battery. That's mm -hmm. it. This is a very special uh, edition of, uh, of the videos here at the Dry Docks. Um, I wanted to get some candid feedback from these two because uh, I had some comments dropped on one of my latest videos pertaining to Seaview here behind me. So none of these guys know what I'm talking about or anything that's going on. So I'm going to give them the background at the same time you are. And uh, by all means, chime in in the comment section below and let me know what's going on. So, so Ed's going to help me look through some, uh, some goodies that we got. Testing, testing. Mic check. All good. What? So I don't even know what that is. I got this. This was thrown in. Japanese aircraft carrier Shinano. <laughs> look at this. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Personally, hey, hey, if you like the Greek, what are they? Greek? Greebles? Yeah. More power to you. Wow. I just like it's cylindrical and black and red. <laughs> That's a little, <laughs> oh, little airplanes. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, they got motors and everything. Yeah. This is like a full RC kit. Well, that's pretty slick. Oh, yeah, motor mounting brackets. Yeah, this couplers. has to be ABS. This is good quality here. Oh. If I was a surface boat kind of person, this would be kind of fun. Yes. This is one of those projects you focus on. Not like us, every little shiny lure. Hold on, sir. Flashes in front of you. You ready? All right. This is the I-53, the notorious I-53 kit that uh, everybody hated so much because of the nose, mostly, right? What's wrong with the nose? It's supposed to be more like a, more like a Type 7 where it's like that, oh. and it's, this is like rolled down. I think Merriman did a, like an accurization upgrade piece oh. for it. Oh, it's like stock kit. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of extra room in here. Yes. You know what that's all about. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Is this ABS? I think it's styrene. Styrene, yeah. yeah. It's a nice size. Yeah. Be perfect for yeah, three, yeah, three inch cylinder. You know you want one. <laughs> Type 7C, 172nd scale. Just a stock kit, unmolested. What scale is this? 72. Ah. She's a baby. Baby, yep. Mm -hmm. Two-inch cylinder, which aren't being made anymore, so... Kind of SOL if you're trying to RC it. But an industrial person will be able to do it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And these actually yeah. build into really nice surface models, too. Just mm -hmm. throw a couple little brushless motors in there. And That's it. If you're not race. afraid of putting anything in the wet, yeah. waterproof servos save a lot of room. Yeah. All right. Nothing. Nope. All right. Okay. Okay, U505, that's in Chicago, right? Yep. yep, 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 yep. I was supposed to see it with my son when he graduated boot camp, but it would have really ruined the day for everybody but him and me. Oh. There was a crowd of us, and I didn't feel it was fair. But So we put it on a bucket list. It's cool. That, that like bunker that they made for that thing is like next level. So there we go. Is that your two inch cylinder? The 2.5. Just... That's a 2.5. But uh, I don't know. It looks a little short in the ballast tank for the nine. It should be like a 10 inch tank. 
for the uh, for both the Type Nine and the Gato. What's oh? Ooh, detail this. upset. Holy! Look at all the brass. All that, that here. This is oh, that, that's here. it there. Oh, 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 oh! Look at that. Oh, brass propellers, dudes. Yeah. For those of you who love detail, we got some stainless steel linkage rods made out of the wrong stainless steel, apparently. Yeah. Was it 304 is what we want, right? Yep. So if any of you guys are looking to get stainless hardware, don't get don't get anything except the 304, otherwise right. it's going to rust. Remember, we've I told you, 1 16th rods, you get the welding rods. Get a pack of welding rods. Yep. Stainless steel welding rods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're smooth. Oh, there's an end cap over there in the corner of the box. Right here. Oh, sort of got by me. Then what's in what's in this? This doesn't look right. No. Ooh, there's a name on it. I will not mention the name, but he's well known. Oh, you can mention the name. Oh, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well known, well known. Can I give a hint? He yeah. served on the Dallas. That that individual may or may not have gotten me on the Greenville. Yeah, <laughs> he is it. Oh, look. Oh, um, yum, 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 yum. oh, look at all of them. Oh, the yum, 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 yum. resin parts. Yum, 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 yum. More props. You got like props coming out your ears. You want this. Mm -hmm. It's it make life easy. to you. Hey, look. Well, I'm still missing a box. I should have. I should be getting another a Gato, 72nd Gato, and another cylinder. So, yeah, this one has got a BLM in there. Servos, I don't see you speaking. Oh, there's a little receiver. Oh. But it would work. You just you'd be floating a little low. Yeah. All good. Needs a little cleanup. We we don't like to float low. These uh cracks are super common, by the way. Yeah. Oh the spider crack? Yeah, polycarbonate. If you don't um stress relieve anything that you drill in it with heat. They'll they'll stress crack. Uh, you'll see it with these all the time too, which is normally fine if they go this way because this is just a ballast tank. But if they go this way, it compromises the seal. So, not good situation. This one looks good though. It's just around the yeah top there. That's usually typical, especially if somebody's over tightened it. Yeah. Yep. All right, and now we're going to take a look for the first time at this. Boat. Um, 30 second scale, German Type 7, by the same gentleman that built the Crockett. So we got a fiberglass hull, and he's got in here, apparently, open that up, see what's in there. Like he documented everything. 30 second parallel, there you go. So that's a 30 second parallel hull, and then completely scratch built internals. This is good stuff. Oh my gosh! This is a wiring good. diagram, and is laminated. No, this is this is good stuff. You know what you're getting into. Holy cow! I only wish every I, you wish everybody did this. Well, that's what I should be doing too, honestly. But I'm just trying to turn. Oh, look at that! He hand painted or hand did that fl that flag. That's all done by hand. Uh, oh, that's cool. Look at this. I mean, this isn't this isn't museum quality, but man, th this would be a solid six no, foot boat. This is worth it. This alone is worth it. So I'll, I'll sell somebody the boat, and then I'll sell them this for like an extra hundred and fifty dollars. Yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that beautiful job labeling everything. Stern planes, bow planes. Where's the throttle? Oh, ballast surface. Oh, speed control. On the side. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay. No. Oh, well, everybody's different. Everybody's different. All right. Well, I think we need to crack into this thing and see. All right. Let's what. see. Look at the. 
Do you think the bow planes work? Or the uh, bow sh- uh, or torpedo shutters? <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if I it- say. You know what? I think I remember the sun saying this has operational torpedoes. Uh oh. Okay. So, yeah, we got our, our little red marked cleats. I don't know. I guess those are ballers, not cleats. All right. I think let's. Let's do a uh, synchronized okay. lift Let off here. Just... Oh, that was easy. Oh, we have a connection. That's in there forever. Uh-oh. Well, so we're just going to have to kind of set it down. Really? Battery. Do you smell that? That's the smell of 1990. <laughs> All right. We've... Uh broken into this thing and i think we've got a little bit of a handle on most of what's going on so let's let's take a look okay all right so we kind of know what's in the back right yeah. we, we got the stern thing all figured out yeah let me put this up like that okay and this all works good actually yeah um because we got things fired up a little bit ballast tank makes sense that's all fine we did figure out about this emergency blow majigger, which yeah. is hooked up to the sub safe. Yeah. But I think what we decided was it might be better just to do away with all the string, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that way, if something happens, it dumps weight and in yes. theory floats to the surface. All right. We, we figured out these seals actually feel pretty good. Nice and, nice and chewy and, and gummy. We've got the... Uh, this broke free, so that's like two seconds to fix. The uh, uh, fail-safe servo it pulls the pin, drops the weight. We got our rudder servo, I think. No, uh, die plane servo and rudder servo, the sub-safe, and the electronic speed controller. This is all. This is all good. And then we figured out power distribution. Two big sealed that acid batteries and it was seven amp hour 12 volt 12 volt seven amp hour sealed that acid batteries is what it was set up for and they drop down slide back drop down and then these two equipment trays sit on top of them side by side Uh, and we've got everything hooked up according to our wiring diagrams which were intensely helpful yeah these were included and you know if you're more than just a casual model builder, I say all the time, you know, at our dive trade meeting, mm-hmm. how important the value of documentation is. You can go anywhere from your personal notebook to using an, ele- an online electronic drawing uh, tool. Yeah. This was, uh, we were able to figure things out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's still some gray areas, but I mean, it's not a... You, know, you can understand what was trying and how to wire things up. Yep, yep, yep. So that's all. That's all. Kind of makes sense. We got we've got a little relay system for controlling the pumps. We talked about replacing this with an electronic relay or yes. just a simple speed, electronic speed controller. Speed control would do away with all of this nonsense here um, and here. Do, do you have one of the modules you can show them? Yeah. Let me just want to pull out. Yeah. The, these are four switches actually. Okay. Try. So he made a reversing switch system out of it. Clever back in the day. Yeah. Um, and this balsa, but you can do this and with a device less than the size of that. Yeah, like a, the electronic relay, the heavy duty switcher module by Mtronics would be a really good uh, idea. Actually, no, um, because we want it reversing. You want a speed controller. You want to see? Yeah, a little little electronic speed controller. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Um. And that would simplify everything, yeah. honestly. Let's see. We have no power. So uh, I just want to show these modules what the technology was like back in the day. Yeah. We got old, old glass fuses, 4 amp glass fuses. Look at the heat sinks on these fats. <laughs> <laughs> but these are, these are kind of neat because this puts out... 12 volts, 9 volts, yeah. and 5 volts, depending on which terminal you connect it yeah. to. So it's like a, a pretty slick yeah, little... Yeah, he had 12 volt coming in. He re- using these devices with heat sinks, he reduced it to 9 and 5 volt. 
But it was interesting, he, reducing it to 5 volt, he didn't bother to tap the receiver off it. Yeah, he had a standalone it's receiver a, battery. Receiver battery, okay. Which, you know. And there was some odd things, like, can we comment about the wire gauge? Yeah. Okay. He used, it appears to be 18 AWG throughout the boat, including feeding the motors and the main 12-volt distribution he used. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those could probably be bumped up. I mean, fortunately... You know, under under full tilt, those motors yeah. really shouldn't be drawing more than no. three. I mean, they'll, they'll handle it. Um, it's just not ideal. Yeah, you know, you're not spiking fifty amps through it. No, 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 no. Less yeah. than three hundred milliseconds. No, you're, yeah, you're, you're gonna be fine. But it's just not good practice because there's also voltage drop. Right. With the smaller uh, yeah. gauge wire. Uh, radio works, by the way. We got it all rigged up. Mm -hmm. and boop, got power. That's all good. It was talking to the receiver. We got, we just fired it up real quick. We got like the stern planes, yeah. the rudders. That was all working. Everything, all of these relay <coughs> servo switchy majiggers were all working. Um, this front compartment is super interesting. So I th we think what happens for the most part, the only one you would need to access often would be the center section. This yeah. is where your battery is. So you'd, you'd need to do that for you know hooking it up and turning it off and that kind of thing. Although he's got switches for power on and off, but like, you know, for, for charging and that kind of stuff. Uh, these would probably stay sealed most of the time, front and back, which is, you know, super, use different color RTV for the seals. Uh, yes. Which yeah. is kind of interesting. Um, this has a full torpedo system. Yeah. <laughs> it has the 30 second parallel torpedo system in there, and that's what they look like right there. Yeah, there's... And this would open the door. Yeah, you see that little door open? And this torpedo it would shoot out. It would shoot out. It's interesting because it was charge and fire. Charge and fire in one motion. In one shot. Yeah. You could see, which, which is very interesting. We should explore this, okay, mm -hmm. as an alternative. Yeah. As you can see, there's a charging tube went all the way into the torpedo, so it would fill as it was ejecting. Yeah. Okay. So you had the pressure of it shooting out, and then it would just gas out. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever was in there. Probably, I don't think it would go very far. Well, this was Freon. This was Freon. So this this is not. Yeah, this is not the butane like. Yeah. Yeah. It's Freon. So you're talking about 60, 70 psi. Mm -hmm. 70, 80 psi maybe, yeah. depending on the temperature. These are these are spring loaded. It's pretty yeah. cool. So that this pulls back. Now the little the little retaining thing broke off on this yeah, side. On this side, but this side is still operating. Yeah, that would take two seconds to fix. Very simple. And and it's all one action. So you pull it pulls back, and at the same time, this horn right here does the firing action. Do, 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 or wherever it went to the other one here. No, yes here. There's your valve to uh, to charge up the torpedoes and fire them. Um, I think this must be rigged up to shoot both at the same time. No. Yeah. Look. Oh yeah, you can. It's teed off. Oh really? Yeah. So it's a it's a double shot. Yeah. So it's not left and right. It's double barrel. Get them. Get them on the first try. <laughs> what is it in the movies? Torpedo loss. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, forward ballast tank with the air plumbing, and this connects to the intake on the other side there. And then in the bottom, in this forward section, this is the pumps. These are the awesome, these are SureFlow geared pumps. These are really expensive, high quality pumps. One for each tank, forward and back, and they're reversible. So you can fill and empty. So that's how it, it works. It pumps water in and out. And then this is basically just a vent that uh, goes up to the surface and pulls air when you get it down um so yeah and then what was oh dive planes that's your forward dive plane servo right there so we got it kind of figured out um it's like it's like a walk back in time oh uh -huh. yeah it, it smells like the 90s <laughs> so um i think with a little bit of time this would be an awesome project boat yeah. for somebody oh not a lot. It's not going to take a lot to get this back in the room. I, no, I don't think not, so. We, we talked about 
replace a couple of those yeah. servo modules. That that would yeah. make it more reliable. Without going um, crazy. And a modern radio would be. And a modern radio. I, I think this the work put in here was yeah, was yeah. pretty good quality. You, you, you could keep it as is. And the and it's not like they were using. You know, like old rubber boots and that kind of thing. No, like no. these are these are you know uh, quality seals, quality seals and everything. Um, it was it was a good build. He did a, a really really good job on this. So I think what I'm going to do um, a couple of options. One is like as is. I'll probably just offer this as is. Two, um, I'll offer it with a cosmetic refresh. I'll do a new a new paint job with weathering on this. Um, I don't have the time to go through and, and gut it and check it and make it work and test and trim and blah, 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 blah. Too much on my plate right now. But um, as is, you can have it right away, or if you wait a couple of weeks, we can do a, a cosmetic refresh with a with fresh paint and a, a nice weathering, dirty weather job, make this thing look really, really good. So I think we're going to button this sucker back up and uh, get her back in the shop. I've even got a wooden shipping crate for free for shipping. All right, one last project before we're going to like wrap it up uh, for this week. You can see we got uh, we got our buddy here, uh, Shark 3.0. This is a five footer and he's got some serious horsepower that we're going to be talking about. And uh, you're kind of excited about this for a reason, right? We you have something in the back of your truck. Oh, Yes. Yeah. Soon, someday to be revealed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this is another project. I have to get this done quick. And I'm hoping I can have this done by next week. I'm really hoping. If not, it'll be the week after that. But this is not like Shark uh, 2.0. This is 3.0. So it's going back. The customer really, really, really wants actuated fins. He wants this thing to like jump up out of the water and do all sorts of fun stuff. What are these rated for, Bob? No, I don't know. I mean, they probably push a small tanker or something. Yeah. We'll see how well they work. The issue is we're, I'm worried about flow, if the, this mouth is going to offer uh, enough intake. Um, we're going to do a little video, a separate video, on creating X-Tail mixes in the uh, Free Sky Radios. So... Um, if you're interested in that, this means you don't need to buy an XTEL mixer. You can set that all up in your radio. So watch for that video separately. So here we are at Taylor Pond, which is 10-ish minutes from my place, um, conveniently. And um, we're going to be trying out a little, a little boat in the water here. The weather's a little overcast. Little breeze, not too bad, but the water's nice and still, if murky. And we call this we call this black water ops, right, Ed? Yeah, black water ops. So this means basically, especially if you got a nuclear submarine, a modern boat, you're not gonna see it if it goes basically below yeah. periscope depth. So we're gonna be doing periscope depth operations, checking out the trim on the uh, Akula and uh, hoping that I do not need to get wet. And after that, Ed is gonna be demoing. I'm gonna demo something special for Bob. Okay. And it has to do, what's, what's the, what would you say is the spacing on those two props? Inch and a half. Yeah, real One, tight. 1.6837. Yeah, well, compared to the <laughs> ratio, compared to the length of the boat, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Put a pin in that. <laughs> All right. Action. Action. So we're at one third throttle. Damn. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Yeah. You're talking 30, 35 foot turning radius. Turning diameter. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna turn off the Look how high that sits out of the water. The prop has probably half an inch of the upper yeah. prop <laughs> out of the water. Uh, a little bit of rise. Pull back a little on it. And that'll that'll get the bow to come up. 
That's that's what real sub. Oh, you're diving. Yeah, I just wanted to get that prop under the water a little bit. Well, you would have been able to do it with the stern planes. Only under speed, though. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, but. So. What's the matter? But she's still moving? As, as long as. Okay. Why don't you steer straight in? Yeah, but I still got rudder and everything. Okay. The radio battery is low. I don't think it's got throttle. Okay. Prop fell off. There's no prop. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Okay. So, all right, Bob, tell us your tales of woe. <laughs> it's just a bad day all over. The connections on the sea view weren't working properly so we had to get that figured out and then we were driving this thing around and we lost throttle and now that we've got it in we can see it's because it has no propulsive apparatus connected to the stern anymore. Yeah, I zoomed in so you can see there's nothing on the stern there no. but Bob can can I be honest with you yeah regardless she's coming home yeah, any, <laughs> that could have happened submerged way out there. It, yeah, exactly. So, so I got I to gotta call Dwayne out for that one. Been properly secure is, is screw. It's like, is that the kind of thing I should be checking? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. All right. Ed's U-boat is in the water. Okay. We're drawing 0.6 amps right now. Okay? This is what I wanted to show you. Look at that. Submarine ballet, that's what that is. Who says you can't have differentials? The trick is in learning the boat. You see, it's not just the motors doing the work. Mm -hmm. It's applying rudder. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and actually, this makes sense. Now, this would probably works really, really good for like U boats and stuff with. The rudder, rudder behind, behind the prop. Because what I'm doing here, okay, this is this is fore and aft throttle. Mm -hmm. And that unused channel, the channel four, that's a differential. Now this is differential alone. You see? Mm -hmm. but now I give it the rudder. That kicks it right over, yeah. Okay. And you can adjust a little fore and aft because they're mixing. Yeah, that's what that's what I was doing with Sea View. You know, you have to kind of a little bit forward, a yeah, little yeah, bit back. On, but once you get in a groove, you become a docking pro. <laughs> well, it is uh, Saturday afternoon. Ed is taking off, and uh, he's on his way home. Um, that's it. We're done for this week. Um, I thank you guys uh, in advance. If you're a Dive Tribe member, means you got first access to this video. Uh, if you're not a Dive Tribe member, you're seeing it two weeks after the fact. So uh, cool things like that Type 7 are probably sold by now, unfortunately, by the time you've seen it. So highly recommend you consider joining the Dive Tribe. Um, it's a small investment that uh, carries a lot of benefits for you. Um, with that, I'm going to leave you with a couple of videos. Let's look over here. Um, take a look at Sharky 2.0, our, our uh, second shark. And over here, how about a preview of uh, Subfest from last year? That is coming up soon in September. Mark it on your calendars. Link is in the description. You have a great day on behalf of myself, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy, and Logan and Sub Ed Toral. Thanks for joining me, and we'll catch you next time.